Uh, we did ask the government to join us tonight. Nobody was available, but instead we can talk to Mark Harper, former Conservative Chief Whip who voted with the government. We've got Ken Clark, the father of the House, Nicholas Soames, the grandson of Winston Churchill, who voted with the Tory rebels and hopes to fight the next election. Ken Clark is stepping down. But Mark Harper, we're going to start with sure. you tonight. Somebody called out there, not a good start, mm -hmm. Boris. He's been in mm -hmm. power as PM 40 days. Yep. Nobody's lost a vote this early since 1894, and this was critical. This is a bad defeat. Well, look, I, the thing I'm most disappointed about uh, with my Conservative colleagues is I, I want them to give Boris Johnson a chance to do what he said he wants to do, which is go to the European Council and come back with a deal uh, that we can get through Parliament. The, the former Prime Minister couldn't get her deal through. I think we need two things to get a deal. He's got to show he can, he can, uh, he can leave without one, but he's also got to show he can get it through Parliament. And I think we've got to show, we've got to bring the Conservative Party together, but we've also got to be able to say to Labour MPs, vote for the deal that the Prime Minister brings back, or it's no deal, because nothing else is going to get them in our division Hang on lobby. A sec. You're talking so as if I'm... the script hasn't changed tonight. No, I, I agree. So now. that's why I'm so that's why I'm disappointed because I think that we should give the Prime Minister the chance to go to the European Council, make the argument, and bring back a deal. If he doesn't bring one back, okay, then those people that are very worried about no deal have some options in front of them. They could do them, but 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 taking the moves they've done today I think is very premature and it cuts off his well, legs, his negotiating hand, and it means the EU, as far as I can see, if the bill is passed tomorrow, the EU has no incentive to make any changes at all. Right, and then, so that's and gone. Then, okay, and let's then, talk and then about we'll the gentleman leave, next to you. And then we'll never leave the European Union. You have two grandees mm -hmm. from your own party here who, as of tonight, are rebels, part of that rump of rebel alliance and they will be deselected by your party. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I think what the Prime Minister said today, which I welcome, is that he thinks that this European issue is a confidence matter and he's going to apply the same level of discipline to both sides oh, of the argument. On. You've so got he's the father well, of the House so he's made and the it, grandson well, of Winston Churchill he, who are being asked to leave the Conservative well, what, what Party. I, what I would say, a man well, who's been voting what, regularly against what, what I would say, against his predecessor for months. Mark, what I would say to, to Ken and Nick is the Prime Minister made it clear today in answer to a question that if he brings back a deal, he will apply the same level of discipline to those colleagues who don't vote for that deal. So if you're Let's cross that MP, one when we come to well, it. No, but I think it's really important. He's being even-handed. He's saying to both, both sides of the argument, this is Let's an important cross matter. that one when he comes saying, back with a deal from the EU. He's saying, don't right tie now, his hands These two gents want to know through. whether they can still call themselves Conservatives, have the party whip, and whether Nicholas Soames can stand well, in his own seat at your next well, election. Well, what I would hope is that... Obviously, they voted the way they have this evening. What I would hope is that tomorrow, when the bill is before the House, that they step back from that and they let the Prime Minister have the opportunity you think to try and come back with a deal. You think I'm going to vote against the bill tomorrow? Well, no, no, I'm just saying, yeah. I, I would hope This is hope a silly footnote issue. I'm not standing and, in the next list know. anywhere. I announced that a long time ago. I'm as amused as Michael Heseltine is by being told he's not a Conservative because he voted against the party in the House of Lords. This is all based on this absurd argument that Boris is trying to get a deal. He's obviously not trying to get a deal. I'm sure he'd prefer one if he thought he could get one past his right-wing supporters, but he's dug him himself in, he's count he assumes he's going to get no deal. He knows there's and no he majority. Will because, because of the way people like you voted tonight. No, it's because he's no he, 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 assumes, he assumes he gets no deal because he can't get the right wing of the Conservative Party, many of them now stuck in his cabinet, to agree to it. Well, he voted he voted in favour of Theresa May's deal deal. I've voted for Brexit. Do you I'm not still trying feel to like reverse a Brexit tonight? Of course I'm a Conservative. I'm a mainstream Conservative. Do you recognise your party tonight? No, it's been taken over by a rather knockabout sort of character who's got this bizarre crash it through philosophy in charge. A lot of people, a cabinet which is the most right wing cabinet any Conservative party's ever produced, they're not in control of events. Uh, Mark's doing his best, but the Prime Minister comes and talks total rubbish to us. Why do you believe him? Why do you believe him when he says he has to hold a, deal a quick election and get well, out, on the blaming table, Parliament and Europe? Well, and the look, I, I think the EU would prefer us to leave with a deal, yeah, and I think Boris would. 
prefer, the Prime Minister would prefer to leave with the deal, and I think that's what he has an opportunity to do. But if it's this, more complicated if this bill that. is passed it, tomorrow, it's more... and effectively it's saying that he has to ask for an extension if he doesn't get a deal and has to agree to whatever the EU offers, whatever conditions are attacked. Well, that's what the bill tomorrow It's more says. complicated than that, Emily. We're, we're never going to get two a deal. We're never going to leave. the last two days. And I'm in no doubt that he wants a deal and that he really? thinks, I'm, I'm quite sure he wants a deal, but what he wants is unachievable. And it's not possible. It's not on offer and he won't get the deal he wants. And I believe that this has all slightly played into his hands tonight, as Ken says. And I think they planned personally all along to have an early general election and to get this out of the way and get a new parliament. Have you been tapped on the shoulder? Have you been I have been told to... by the Chief Whip, who is my friend and who I like very much, but he has told me that it will be his sad duty to write to me tomorrow to tell me that I've had the whip removed. After 37 years as a Conservative Member of Parliament, I've voted against the government three times in 37 years and I've had the whip removed. Uh, you know, uh, that's fortunes of war. I knew what I was doing. And, but I just believe that it's not... He's, they're not playing straight with us in that to say you want a deal is quite different from saying you want a deal that is achievable. So um, and what he wants ask, is not though, achievable. And what will you do then at the next election? If an election is called imminently, will you stand? Will you stand as an I, independent I, I Conservative? I actually won't stand. I'm not going to stand. Um, I, so he's losing both of you. No, but... Uh, yes, well, Ken was all going to go anyway, but I'm. I'm I was going to go anyway. I first announced I was going to retire in 2015. I put it off once already. Yes, but so but, but I have to decide whether to vote Conservative if Boris Johnson's still the leader. Uh, that's my next problem. I am a Conservative, of course I am. But my kind of Conservative, and I've been a mainstream Conservative for 60 years. You know, I'm part of the establishment, I think I could claim the Conservative Party. You're part of the elite. A large then. part of my career. And anybody who comes out to me and tells me I'm not a Conservative is plainly, you know, taking an odd political view. But there, there, I don't, rec I don't recognise this. There used to be this phrase, this, the, the One Nation leader. And this Tory. this leader, I don't recognise this. Is, this is now this. One Dogma It's a Brexit Tory. party look, rebadged. Look, Emily, on, on all other issues, Right. I don't think there's probably much of a difference between no, any of us, including, by the way, Boris Johnson. Well, there Johnson. is, because, all the, well, you are, because well, putting you yourself for on a side. side. Because all the other issues that Boris Johnson's been talking about during the summer, I don't suspect that Ken or, or Nick would disagree with any of them. On Europe, there is a difference of opinion. And, and Nick's agreed that the Prime Minister does want a deal. Uh, I, I perhaps disagree. I think actually there is a chance of getting the Europeans to move. But they need to believe that if they move, we can get whatever deal they give us through Parliament. And for that to be true, I think the Conservative Party needs to come together and back the Prime Minister, at least give him the chance to make that argument at the European Council. And I think we also need to be able to confront Labour MPs. Labour keeps saying it doesn't want no deal, but it had three opportunities to vote for a deal and didn't. I think we've got to confront them with a choice. Well, from the Prime Minister's perspective... That we perspective, haven't confronted them with so he far. He is getting rid of dead wood that is holding him back from achieving what he wants. I mean, that is how this well, will be Well, he's going to find now. it quite difficult in the next few days. He's lost Philip Lee, so he's lost his majority. And he's now going to lose six more. He's going to lose the father of the house, two former chancellors, eight privy councillors. You know, it's not a sensible way to run a government, really. If you take away, mm. you, as in the Conservative yeah. the governments now, take away the whip from the 21 rebel... Tories, mm. you are left with 294. Mm -hmm. Now, the SNP, Labour and the Lib Dems, mm. the Greens, make up 297. Doesn't that seem the craziest maths you will ever enter into? just before an election? Well, look, I think on the European issue, I don't think whether people have the whip or not is going to change the arithmetic. Because no, clearly, wait a second. It is people, if they're going to be deselected well, no, and they're not allowed people, to stand. Because clearly people today voted in light of knowing what was going to happen. So I think the real issue tomorrow is just saying to people, look, just think about what you're doing. You made the point that Boris Johnson hasn't been Prime Minister oh, honestly, very long. Honestly, with, with the greatest respect, to... you're, not, you're not going to say to people, think about what you're doing tomorrow when you've seen how they voted today. They're not suddenly going to have a damaging conversion overnight. No one is going to peel away from tonight's result. Well, no, but what, well, the point I would make is there are, there are 17 Labour MPs who've tabled amendments for tomorrow. Uh, it's entirely possible that if those amendments are not carried, they've made it quite clear, those 17 Labour MPs, they do not want 
uh, infinite extensions and this process never to be resolved. Uh, and I think there's an argument to be made that we need to bring this to a close, to get out of the European Union Nothing is brought and to negotiate a close. that future Nothing relationship, is brought to not a keep close. going on forever. Nothing is brought to and a that's close. that's what this bill does. What these gentlemen have chosen is an extension mm. which doesn't bring it to a close and no deal doesn't end anything. It is just the absence of a deal. It's like a teenager slamming their bedroom door. It doesn't get you out of the bedroom. Well, it gets you out of the European Union, which is what and then people what? that voted Brexit... Well, then and then you start the process of negotiating the future yeah, relationship. Negotiation. With, yeah. no, leverage. Which, with years, no leverage. With no leverage. Well, I, I think there's you've a... you lost any negotiating Well, I think there's a positive argument to be made about Britain's place in Europe, because we're not leaving Europe, we're leaving the European Union, about all that we bring to Europe in terms of the size of our economy, the, the role we play in European yeah, security... They might not have their arms open after all this. Well, Mark. look, I, I do think there's a positive argument to be made there. I think the Prime Minister started making that argument when he met with the President of France and the Chancellor of Germany, and I hope that sort of diplomatic engagement Nicholas continues. Nicholas Soames, a last thought to you. Is this the night that we saw the end of the Conservative Party as your grandfather will have known it, as you will have known it? No, but it's a bad night. It is a bad night, and it's a pity, in my view, a great pity, that this is, in my view, all been planned. I think we, it's, it's been planned. I think this is exactly what they wanted. Uh, I think they've got it, and they're going to announce tomorrow they're going to table the necessary legislation to uh, try and organise to have a general election. And I think that's what they wanted. Thank you very much indeed.